Well, this, have you guys seen this? Um, this stuff. So concerning Guy Gerber, right? There's these reports going around that he might have R-worded somebody. And I don't really know what to believe, to be completely honest. I think some of these accounts, when it comes to our word, especially when it comes to dance music culture, especially when it comes to nightlife, it's just a little bit murky because of all the unnecessary add-ons that are involved in it, in terms of it being nighttime, in terms of people being intoxicated, in terms of people being drugged up, in terms of people maybe looking for attention. I don't know what's going on. And then especially in terms of the industry as well, I feel like there's a lot of kind of excuses made for certain people. There's a lot of turning of the blind eye. There's a lot of enabling, especially when they're big names. People don't want to lose the ability to have that person booked at the club because it's going to mean they're not going to be able to make a certain amount of money at the gate or at the ticket sales or at the bar. There's a really weird culture around dance music when it comes to these sort of accusations. I feel like men or women don't really get the um, benefit of the doubt they probably should get just based upon especially if it concerns a really successful big person they don't really get that benefit of the doubt it seems to be a little bit they seem to be treated like shit really for the most part and there seems to be a lot of um, victim shaming and blaming so it's kind of hard for us as or for me as just a spectator from the outside to basically ascertain who's telling the truth and who isn't because it seems like two it seems like both parties have very different accounts of what actually happened do you know what I mean and this is courtesy of an account that I follow here on, on Twitter that's really good in terms of keeping up to date with some of the nefarious stuff that happens in dance music culture called um, Sam Karam and he says as follows Guy Gerber rape testimony sources is a person called Mavie Damas personal Instagram so this is the person I guess posted their um, account of what happened to them when they were with Guy Gerber the very famous tech house DJ so it says as follows trigger warning Guy, Guy Gerber R-worded me, right? So this is kind of going from one to two. It says here, the incident I'll talk about took place in the morning of 21st of July, 2013 in Mykonos, Greece. And at the time I was 20 years old. So it was some time ago, it wasn't like a recent thing. I, I'm, <clears throat> I'm curious to know what kind of spurred the person to kind of recount the story now, just in terms of curiosity. I know, but I would imagine some of these traumatic events, you know, there's stuff that kind of lingers in the head for a long time. And there is no real time, what's that thing called? There is no time limit on when you can tell your story, but I'm just curious to know what kind of prompted it now. Cause I know when I was following the whole Crystalia stuff, it was really interesting to read that the main girl that kind of accused Crystalia of what he was accused of. I think of like, you know, texting underage girls or whatnot. She basically said that she was watching you, that series on Netflix, which Crystalia was in. And she just saw him being promoted on online a lot. I think, you know, when those Netflix shows come on, I'm guessing her algorithm on YouTube was full of Crystalia content, him interviewing about the show, talking about his character, blah, blah, blah. And then he just kept getting plastered in front of her face. And it was like a constant reminder of like the douchebag that she kind of encountered. And she just had enough and just fired off a tweet. And then that set a snowstorm of everything that happened that obviously she led to his kind of brief cancellation, blah, blah, blah. So I'd be curious to know what kind of triggered this account. But anyway, we continue. Having received an invitation by my girlfriend, no, sorry, by a girlfriend of mine um, from Athens, Greece, I decided to join her and a couple of other friends for a boat party, for a boat trip, sorry, in Mykonos. I had met Guy Gerber about a year and a half prior to this for a mutual friend while he was in London playing a gig. Since we first met, we had briefly hung out in other social environments a couple of more times. On the way to Mykonos, I'd heard he was there but didn't think much of it as my plan was to stay with my Greek friends. Two. As we arrived to the party, some of my London friends were there and Guy was with them. The night was quite a disaster, so I remember the details were very vividly, but to keep it short, it didn't stay. I didn't stay. We didn't stay long. We decided to leave in some of the London crew and the guy um, back to the friend's villa where he was also staying. Guy and another DJ friend played for us there. So a little bit of an after hours party. That's, that's I think, is the real... It's weird to say this because I think it's, it's all disgusting and it's all disrespectful, but just kind of hold me. Just kind of stay with me here. That I think is a real mark of disgusting disrespect thing, right? In terms of, I remember reading accounts of Harvey Weinstein's abuse, right? It was, it was, if it wasn't bad enough that he was abusing and taking advantage of these young, um, naive, up and coming actresses who just wanted to get in Hollywood at any means cost them or just, you know, enamored with the industry and were just willing to do whatever it took to get where I need to get to, and he took advantage of that. If that wasn't enough, 
the other gruesome part of it was that he was taking advantage of like assistants and like managers and like cleaners like people that are just like the integral fiber of like holding up that hollywood industry right? people that are kind of integral to making sure that your business runs smoothly he was also taking a piss out of them do you know what i mean it's like it's enough that you're damaging these young ladies who are kind of coming in doughy eyed and wide eyed industry you're also kind of abusing the people that are like mainstay so same with this like it's bad enough you're going to be random fans but then actual people who are part of your inner circle the ones that you would be happy enough to jump in an uber with the ones you'd be happy enough to hang out in a green room the ones you'd be happy enough to invite back to your hotel room with those are the ones you take advantage of i mean it's kind of gross that way that's what that's what i really can't get my head around but i guess if you're a monster that way which i mean whoever whoever's around you take advantage of there is no kind of you know uh delineation between wide-eyed naive person and somebody you've known for years i mean it's all kind of they're all kind of victims that you can kind of exploit which is horrendous but that's always a kind of common trait you hear about people that do this sort of stuff they always take advantage of people that are closest to them as well it's not just a random person always the closest person to them so that's why when people say i didn't know i didn't know you're lying everyone knew you're lying then that was quite da -da -da. we decided to leave with some london crew to guy back with friends and a dj there i remember clearly guy spending a lot of time talking to other mutual friends about the hard time he was having in ibiza as that was the summer he was doing his first event on the island um wisdom of the glove at pasha as the gu other guests left i was going to leave too and realized that my phone battery had died but the owner of the house and her fiance were in the far end of the pool so i thought i would stay a little longer until they came out he was just finishing playing so i came to sit next to him and that's when he offered me what he said was a line of stimulant drug and i shot of alcohol stimulant drug being coke oh, why did you say stimulant drug <laughs> seeing as i was um sober and i tried to and i uh, sober and try and tired i thought it might not be a bad idea i never had any romantic interest in him or any attraction and all our exchanges until that point have never indicated anything of, of nature so i felt safe to hang out as a friend <sighs> that assumption man assumptions will lead you in trouble all the time in it always assumptions lead you in trouble man assuming things god damn you can never assume in it you have to always treat everybody as like a potential um as a potential assailant unfortunately especially if you're a woman anyway a potential assailant that's unfortunate but it just is what it is i saw my friends all the time all my friends told me oh it's annoying when you walk behind the girl and she catches her bag or starts running off behind him it's like of course they would like i don't feel bad about that like why should they give you the benefit of the doubt they don't know who the hell you are you could be anybody do you know what i mean you should treat everybody like a monster really until they prove you until they prove you different really and even then, keep your, keep your third eye open. Anyway, it continues. So when about 10 to 15 minutes later, I saw him leaning in to kiss me, I felt totally shocked and immediately wanted to push him away. But unfortunately, I could no longer move my arms, even if my head was screaming. What did he give her then? Like, it wasn't coke. Next, the last thing I remember is him putting his arm around me and walking me to his bedroom as my consciousness dimmed down to complete darkness like a dimmer switch. And I went into what was known as a Rufio-induced state of automatic obedience root so she got roofied shit so i'll take back my coke comment jesus christ i regained my awareness about four hours four to five hours later waking up in total confusion next to him naked in the bed with zero recollection of anything that happened bruising that remained for almost three days which vividly tell a very much a very much remembered nine years later i managed to get myself together and go ask for the phone charger so i can charge oh my god this whole time my phone wasn't charged what a nightmare holy shit what a nightmare you stay to charge your phone you hang out with a superstar dj you have a bit of a line thinking yeah it's just gonna give me a bit of a pep and a bit of a shot just to kind of keep myself awake and have a bit of a chat afterwards and then you end up waking up in the bed naked and your phone isn't charged still um anyway i charge my phone make my way back to the boat where i was staying and fleeing and feeling fleeing as quickly as possible when i got to my friends immediately started having an emotional breakdown as i felt i really confused and disorientated at the time i had no idea that rufio is that how you pronounce it ruf ruf rufino or rufino rufino i think was or how it worked so i had reference to make sense of what went being so of what of what went from being sober to consuming a stimulant to sleeping with somebody I didn't desire and had no memory of. You know, this sounds like a lot to me. This sounds like a lot of the recent accounts I've been hearing about people in Berlin and stuff. I know it's happening everywhere, but so far there's been really loads of detailed accounts about people getting spiked in Berlin, in different places like Berghain, in places like Sisi Foss I saw the other day. Like it's happening a lot quite often. And people either getting spiked like with an actual needle or it's people getting spiked with people putting stuff in their drinks which is fucking crazy and i think the berlin club commission had to put out a notice basically telling people to like hey mind your drinks be aware 
But it's pretty grim to hear, man. It's happening to men and women too. Just this weekend at the CSD thing that happened in Berg, Berg and someone mentioned they got spiked as well, dude. So it's pretty crazy out there. My boyfriend at the time then called me and said he was having horrible nightmares about me and asking anything could happen. And I told him it happened and he had no idea how it happened. Oh my God. Imagine having to explain to your boyfriend and try basically, because you'd imagine a boyfriend would immediately believe that it was not a rape or not an assault and you'd wanted it or something. And you're already dealing with that trauma. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. As soon as enough of dissociation and repression, and repression kicked in as a defense, and like many women who had had these experiences, I decided to pretend like it didn't happen, even when I saw him again. Very soon, however, I started feeling depressed, self destructive, and my relationship became very toxic. Within six months, I knew I needed to get out of London and try to just understand what was going on with me. And luckily, at the very time, I'd received an offer to work with the project outside of the UK, which gave me the quiet I needed to begin the process of healing. Next page, let's see. How many pages are there here? I think it's the last one in it, right? Um, last page. A couple of months into my into uh, into my time there, I um, happened to stumble on an article about date rape. Okay, this is what's basically spurned it again. Um, an account of a girl who was given roof, you know. That's when I first realized I began to accept what happened to me as word for word and I had the same experience as she did. Since I accepted that happened with, to me, I began to talk about it with friends and acquaintances but never felt the courage to go public. A couple of times, a couple of those friends who knew Guy and confronted him about it to which he responded by explaining rumors and paid to me as a bad light in false stories whenever somebody responds to assault ac accusations by telling them it's rumors fake news and trying to paint the victim out to be a liar and shit and really being aggressive that way it's not a good sign and it's usually it kind of smells a bit fishy when someone does that i would assume having read these stories if you did nothing wrong you'd want to do like what bieber did in it and just stick to the facts and not get all hysterical and not try to put smart on the person's name just stick to the facts this is where i was at she said here i was there this is a picture of me here this is the, i mean you'd, you'd be like methodical in your explanation there'd be no emotion around it because you know you didn't do anything um in my opinion anyway but hey wanting to redeem myself for not speaking out and preventing this happening to other women i began to feel inspired to create an event and movement to make this island safer for women and to stand against abuse my intention going ahead with this is to stop more women from being are you promoting your night now at the end of your abuse story? My intention going ahead with this is to stop more women from, from being raped like I was, helping that people become a leader and stand against the toxic culture from the health of the future generations. If you have more uh, information, would like to support, uh, support the movement. Our, our time is now, for Come on, girl, man. That's a, li that's a little bit distasteful and a bit gross. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm selling tickets now, buy my book. Like, come on, man. Like, have some respect for yourself. Like, yuck, in that regard. But... The story still remains um, pretty disturbing. Now, one thing I'd like to just point out there is that, that just interests me. I don't know what's real and what's not, what happened, what didn't happen. It's just interesting to me how, for the most part, these stories do absolutely nothing in terms of affecting the person that's accused. Zero. They do nothing. I've had read many of these accounts on my podcast beforehand. I've spoken about it ages ago before and other people too. But it does absolutely nothing. It really does nothing. And I wonder why that is with dance music. And don't tell me because it's a male-dominated industry. It's not really. Most of the people who work behind the scenes in this industry, um, they're not men. Most of them are women, especially people that work within the overall hospitality industry. So to say it's definitely a men's issue is I just don't think that really cuts it, to be completely honest. I want to know what is about dance music and electronic music in general. What is it about this kind of scene that allows people to just get, a, quote unquote, not get away with it, but you know, in most industries or most sectors, if you get accused of something like this, you have to have a bit of a time out. But for the most part, even if there's evidence, even if there's detailed accounts, it takes a lot for people to really kind of tell you, time out, you're kind of quote unquote cancelled. It takes a lot. Most people aren't going to care. Most people are still going to book you. Most people are still going to be associated with you and stuff. It's really bizarre. And I don't know why it is. I really haven't gotten down to the bottom of it. Why is it that dance music culture in general just tolerates a lot of this abuse stuff more than any other industry or scene that i've seen in public anyway it seems to always happen no matter the scale of the person it could be somebody very local it could be somebody as famous as guy gerber they seem to be able to get away with whatever they seem to be able just to get away with it and again he might not have done it who knows but in terms of just the accusations for him to come out with an accusation like that and it not affect you at all and you not be able to miss a beat and just keep it moving it's a bit mad 
But anyway, this is Guy Gerber's account of the of the, of what happened. Um, so it's just from an Instagram account four weeks ago. It says, I woke up a few days ago to a waterfall of messages and I was completely shocked when I heard Maybe Dimar's post. I actually remember the day I met her. It's good on you to remember that, mate. I played in a small villa party attended by mainly friends and an owner. I was DJing that night until very late the next day. And yes, I remember Maybe. Since the, she came near me multiple times throughout the night trying to get my attention. So again, he's trying to make her sound like a slut. You got to love this sort of stuff, isn't it? I also remember that I thought it was weird because she was with another guy. So the boyfriend was there, but she was trying to, oh my God. So what she's saying, she was, she was, she had a boyfriend at home and there was another guy there that she was hooking up with and also Guy Gerber. God, I love it. What a gentleman. The party kept on going and at some point, most of the people left. Maybe, however, stayed by my side and waited until everybody went to sleep. So she was clearly, he's basically saying she was clearly, you know, a DTF. He, he ended up, we ended up going to one of the rooms in the villa and had sex until we slept. When we woke up, she told me that she felt guilty about her boyfriend. I was a bit surprised because she said that they were in an open relationship. But then she said that she still needs to explain it to him. After that, we never stayed in touch. She never contacted me, but I saw her at least once during one of my shows. Maybe claimed in her post that I used some sort of drug in her drink and raped her. This is an ugly lie. I would never do such a thing. And to be extremely clear, she was totally aware of her doings. Maybe is truly is trying to hurt my name, but I do not intend to stay silent. I decided to take legal actions against her and the first working day after the facts my lawyer filed, our first motion to the court attached have I have no doubt that Spanish courts will unveil the truth. So what's he gonna do? Is he gonna sue her? Okay, this is interesting development. He's actually going to sue her. Huh. Just for you to know, I waited a few days after for commenting this, hoping things would clear up on their own, because I was thinking that everybody that reads it will know that it's totally untrue. Why would we know that? Well, we don't know you, brother. Like, huh? I obviously preferred not to post such graphic descriptions of my personal life on my page. Um, as much as the last few days have been like hell for me, as you can imagine, I will not diminish my support of the Me Too movement. It will not diminish my support. <laughs> Yo, this guy called her a whore. Uh, he called her a liar. He said he's going to sue her. And then he said he's me too. Guy's hitting it all, isn't it? God damn it. Um, it, would not be, it, it would not diminish my support of the Me Too movement anyway. In a call, and I call on you to continue to support and believing in the important movement. Finally, I want to thank all the love and support I've, I've got for so many people around me and from the industry. Some of them are not even my friends. It's a very difficult time for me, but I will get through this and come out of it stronger. I was actually talking to a girl the other day and she said she doesn't believe the girl. She says she believes Guy Gerber. And she says a lot of girls in the dance music industry behind the scenes, because I'm not really, you know, I try to keep myself away from the group. I think I had a conversation with somebody about the other day about guest lists and stuff. I don't care about guest lists and all that malarkey. I much prefer to have guaranteed that I know I'm going to get into a club. Imagine if it's an in-demand nightclub. Maybe it's nice to have a guest so you can get in, so you don't have to queue for hours outside. That's fair enough. But I don't care about green rooms. I don't care about all that stuff. I don't really care. Do you know what I mean? That kind of back room, trying to get in with the people and whatnot. I want to be an artist in terms of being a DJ, and I want to be appreciated for my art, not because people like me to be around and shit. That's a bit, you know, it's not how I want to roll. But I remember this girl telling me that, people that are about that life and do love the green room life and like to hang out with djs and you know have lines behind the booth and stuff and whatnot they kind of play up to this you know they basically um offer themselves to djs and people do you know what i mean they kind of go out of their way to be like okay i slept with the most djs and whatnot it may be so she definitely thinks that this girl is one of them and this is a girl girl not like a you know whatever this is like a woman basically saying yeah she doesn't believe them so again there's something i want to know if you know in the comments there's something intrinsic about dance music community where it doesn't really benefit favor or believe victims it's always really just a victim shaming kind of industry for the most part the benefit of that always gets given to the artist however big or small they are it's very strange maybe because there's a lot of maybe because it's an artist isn't it because if you're a dj you're an artist so you have fans so naturally your fans don't want to see you cancelled because they love you they want to support you so if an accusation does come out about you have a heinous they're gonna not want to believe it because they want to see you play at the next festival the next gig maybe that's why i don't know anyway continue finally i want to thank all the love and support da, da, da. this is a very difficult time for me but i will get through this and come out of it stronger and of course this is the filing he put forward about the charge this is in spanish i can't read it um, but yeah, it looks like he's suing the girl. Absolutely crazy, isn't it? So he's taking it seriously. He's not really playing around. Um, but yeah, I don't know what to believe. I don't know who to believe in this story. Um, I just, like I said, think it's unfortunate that I'm a, I'm a little bit of a weirdo when it comes to dance music and industry and stuff. Cause I'm a little bit of an idealist. I would, I would actually love if the industry or if the scene overall was some sort of version of a utopia, if we could create 
this space where for six hours, seven hours, eight hours, 10 hours, however long the party last, you could essentially be yourself, be free with no threat of violence, of assault, of abuse or anything. It doesn't need to be the most comfortable space, whatever it may be, but the stuff that you're kind of used to encountering in your everyday life for once, for once in that space, for those few hours, you just get to kind of let your hair down and just be free. That's what I remember experiencing the first time I went to Berlin, right? For the first time, because in London, our kind of clubbing culture is very constrained in terms of tickets, in terms of times you can get in, in terms of security checks, in terms of the attitudes around drugs, in terms of the drink prices. Well, it's, there's a lot of constraints. So you have to kind of fight against a lot of things before you can get to enjoy yourself. But when you first go to a place like Berlin, the first thing you realize is that, oh shit, this is what clubbing culture on the highest level should be about, right? This is what it should be about. This is what you should be doing. This is like the, the pinnacle, the kind of the, the the kind of top of the mountain sort of like level of it, right? The apex predator of flipping clubbing. Because you essentially get to let your hair down. There's no pictures being taken on the dance floor. There's no heavy handed security. The, drug, the acceptance of drug culture is really cool. Everyone's having a good time. Everyone wants to dance, blah, 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 blah. Now, it would be nice if everywhere around the world had its own version of such things. So you could go to a place and just know you could be cool, you could be calm, you could be easy, you could be carefree without having the threat of somebody touching you up, somebody trying to abuse you, somebody trying to harass, harass you, whatever it may be. Just in that space. Whatever happens afterwards, it will happen afterwards. But in that clubbing space, it would be nice to have that utopia. But unfortunately, as I sometimes say, it's good to operate in the world as is, as opposed to how you'd want it to be. So in reality for us to expect a club to be a utopia is really naive or myself is really naive and dumb and full-heartedly because you know a club is like anywhere else in the world any other space there's always going to be monsters and people lurking around the corner willing to do you damage especially if you let your guard down so you essentially have to keep your guard up at all times which is again really really frustrating and annoying if you're a girl because you just want to go out and enjoy yourself but it's kind of a common thing you kind of have to keep your eye on and i guess if you're a dj you also have to be mindful that not everyone that comes around you that kind of wants to you know get jiggy with you is well-intentioned maybe some of them that are coming around you actually want to see you burn for whatever reason so you kind of have to be on your p's and q's also and make it a mission to maybe be a little bit picky and selective about who you end up sleeping with at the end of the night because i'd imagine the temptation is pretty grand because you're a dj you're commanding that entire space you're basically you know taking them on a journey sending them left right up and down all around whatever it may be and i'm sure that kind of intensifies attraction and the fact that you're very good at your job the fact that you're getting a lot of adulation a lot of attention it's gonna make you attracted to certain people but you have to be selective you have to be really picky about who you try to hook up with and get with because this sort of hassle just doesn't seem worth it really for a little cuddle and a little bonk guy at the end of a clubbing session or at the end of an after hours you probably don't remember that well which is a little bit extra in my opinion but again who to believe i'm not really too sure force of feelings go out to the victim of course because it sounds like a harrowing story and i guess we have to kind of let it play out in the courts and go from there really in it but an interesting kind of development they ended up actually suing the girl that i actually didn't know about but yeah big up what's going on over there